Canada and the U.S. share a unique bond. They enjoy a vast and undefended border, deep economic ties, a tested military alliance, and similar cultures. But their friendship wasn't certain. Canada would not break free of the colonial yoke until the late 1800s. The Convention of 1818 between Britain and America following the War of 1812 had a tough job to take on, determining the border between Canada, British's colony during that time, and the U.S. In an effort to avoid controversy and confusion caused by drawing the boundary based on watershed, the two countries agreed on a simpler solution, the 49th parallel, the line that separates Canada and the U.S. Point Roberts in the Whatcom County, Washington State is a 4.9-square-mile unincorporated American exclave located in the southern part of Canada's Sawasan Peninsula. On the surface, the question of Point Roberts' political status is clear, it's part of the U.S. But, there's something more complex here. Known as an exclave, Point Roberts is a bit of an oddity in that it's not an island and yet it's completely separated from the rest of the U.S. The only land route to travel from Point Roberts to the rest of Washington and the U.S. is by passing through one international border, crossing into Canada, driving 25 miles, or about 40 kilometers, and passing through another international border, crossing into the U.S. This town of over 1,000 people has a clinic, a police station, a fire department, a library, a marina, and a primary school. As a result of its geographic peculiarity, the town has some strange habits. Point Roberts has a primary school, but students past third grade must take a bus to classes in Blaine, Washington, a round trip of more than 50 miles or 80 kilometers that travels into Canada and back into the U.S., requiring four border crossings a day. It's a familiar slog for residents, who make similar trips for doctor's appointments, or to pick up prescriptions or car license plates. And then there are the quirks and hassles of living by an international boundary. Some seem to defy logic, although they're meant to protect U.S. agriculture from pests and diseases. Residents aren't allowed to bring in whole tomatoes, but sliced tomatoes are fine. In its early years Point Roberts was an unused military reserve, almost a no-man's land of sorts, but by 1900 the reserve was gone and an active fishing industry was developing there. In 1892, the U.S. government vacated the reserve, clearing the way for real development, although Point Roberts was not fully opened to homesteading until 1908. A town formed, and in its earliest years, attracted a significant number of people of Icelandic descent. Some farmed and others worked for the canneries. Various entrepreneurs set up fish traps in the waters offshore, providing residents with another source of employment. In 1934 fish traps were outlawed in Washington state, sounding the death knell for the fishing industry at Point Roberts. During the 1950s a great change came to Point Roberts from its neighbors to the north. Canadians had bought land on the point from its early days, but in 1953 they were officially given the right by state statute to purchase land in Washington state. In 1959, a four-lane tunnel opened at Dias Island south of Vancouver, making it easy for Vancouverites to travel to Point Roberts. These events led to an influx of Canadians purchasing land from broke farmers, and by 1970 more than half of the town's permanent residents were Canadian. Eventually, the fishing faded and in the past half-century Point Roberts has become a unique recreational community with a strong Canadian influence. For many, Point Roberts' appeal is sheer economics. Canadians own summer homes here because waterfront real estate is much cheaper than in the Vancouver area. About three-quarters of the properties in Point Roberts are owned by Canadians. And there's steady traffic year-round drawn by lower-priced petrol, milk and alcohol, due to lower U.S. taxes compared to Canada. Nearly 40% of the border crossings into Point Roberts were to purchase petrol, which can yield Canadian drivers a savings of 20% to 30%. That explains why the town has 60 gas pumps, and why petrol stations list prices in liters, which is how fuel is sold in Canada. Others come to pick up packages at one of the town's several shipping stores. By using a Point Roberts address, Canadians can receive online shopping from the U.S. Not only is the price usually cheaper, but some products can't be shipped internationally. The number of Canadians with registered mailboxes in Point Roberts is 40 times larger than the number of permanent residents. 
The town also has a supermarket packed with more products and produce than could ever be consumed in this tiny community. The International Marketplace Grocery tries to make it easier for its customers, noting which products can be taken into Canada, Idaho potatoes, sure, Honeycrisp apples, absolutely not. It also has two cash drawers, one each, for U.S. and Canadian currency. Similar, but worse than the experiences of other border towns, Point Roberts has struggled during the COVID-19 pandemic with border closures. Lacking Canadian tourism, Point Roberts has been described as a ghost town, and the U.S. residents have essentially been trapped on the peninsula. Residents are not allowed to enter Canada to return to the U.S. mainland. It's estimated 85% of the Point Roberts economy relies on business from Canadians. The number of people entering Point Roberts dropped from nearly 1.5 million in 2019 to just 43,000 in 2021, according to the U.S. Department of Transportation. Point Roberts today accurately touts itself as a uniquely American community. But to a casual observer dropping in for the day, it feels as much Canadian as it does American. Mark Swenson, treasurer of the Point Roberts Historical Society and author of Point Roberts Backstory, a history of the town described the relationship between Point Roberts and Canadian, we're a community with one foot in both countries. We rely on each other.